This is believed to be the most reproduced work of art in history. More than any Picasso or Van Gogh or Michelangelo. And you've probably never heard of the artist, Warner Salman. This is the most well-known image that Mr. Salman painted in 1940. It's called the head, the head of Christ. Leroy Carlson is a pastor in the Chicago-based Evangelical Covenant Church. He's made it his mission to tell the world about Warner Salman through exhibits and lectures. I never knew Mr. Salman, but Mr. Salman was a son, a favorite son of the Evangelical Covenant Church. Mr. Salman was an artist in the Chicago area. He painted trucks and coats and pianos and, you know, he was a commercial artist. In 1924, Salman created this illustration for a church publication. But it was the 1940 version in oil that took off when he sold it to Christian publishing company Kreebel and Bates. By 1941, more than a million prints had already been sold. Today, it's over a billion prints, knickknacks, postage stamps. It was given to the men and women who went off to serve in World War II. The Salvation Army, the YMCA, they had a bunch of these wallet-sized printed. Kreebel and Bates distributed reproductions of many other Salman paintings. Some also became widely known, but none as much as his Head of Christ. He also created versions in chalk, often with worshipers present, captured here in a 1954 film by the Evangelical Covenant Church. It seemed like I would see them almost on a daily basis growing up at the schools or churches or Boy Scout meetings. Paul Beatty is a freelance photographer in Chicago. I grew up Catholic, and uh, as a young kid, I was in the catechism and CCD. And uh, during class, I would space out and not listen to the teacher and stare at those Salmon prints. Paul Beatty collects Americana, art and artifacts from garage sales and places like the Salvation Army. But he never expected to find these original Warner Salmons at a thrift store. I walked in and couldn't believe that <laughs> something like this would be in the Salvation Army, so yeah. It was in February of 2016. One was in oil, one in chalk. I knew they were originals from across the room, but I didn't know how rare they were until I started Googling. Warner <laughs> Salman is only known to have painted five oils of Head of Christ. Oh, yeah. Clearly someone at the Salvation Army didn't know the value of what they had. They were $125 each, and um, I had $300 to my name. <laughs> so I went up to the lady, I'm like, uh, these are kind of high, can you come down a little bit? And she said, well, these are really nice frames. <laughs> I, can, I, can, uh, I can let you have them for 100 bucks each. So yeah, so I got them for 100 each, so. Paul knew they had to be worth more than that. For an appraisal, he turned to Warner Salmon expert Leroy Carlson. Often we get, we get calls or on, on, on the email and said, I have this painting, you know, it was in grandma's house and so on. What's it worth? Da, 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 da. When Carlson saw the oil, he knew just which painting it was. I've seen most of the originals, but it was, it turned out to be, uh, the property of the Salvation Army. It's not just that the painting was purchased at a Salvation Army thrift store. It had hung for years in Salvation Army offices first in Minneapolis, and then in suburban Chicago. Leroy Carlson found a description in Salman's biography. It measures three feet by four feet and has a white background. The face looks almost exactly like the face That's of the it. 1940 oil. This is it. How did this end up in a thrift store? <laughs> yeah, see, that's the question. That's the question. The other big question, of course, is what are they worth? Leroy Carlson appraised the oil at $100,000 and the chalk at $35,000. Paul Beatty, as you might imagine, is ecstatic. How was this news received at the Salvation Army? They've issued the following statement. We regret the oversight that led to a donated piece of art being purchased at a thrift store, and we'd welcome the gift being returned to our collection. 
But Paul Beatty says he has no intention of returning the painting, and in fact is trying to sell both the oil and the chalk. He says it could change his life. I've been on this roller coaster trying to, to sell this potentially valuable piece of art um, and just getting by. I need to buy camera stuff. My cameras are getting very old, and uh, my truck's got 250,000 miles on it. Paul Beatty says some people have told him that he should give it back, that it's sacrilegious to sell religious art. His response? What about all the religious art by the great masters? Plenty of that has certainly been bought and sold. Some people say that Salman's genius was in making Jesus relatable, initially to his mostly Swedish fellow church members, and then more widely in mid-20th century America. Maybe the best example is this 1954 painting, which features Jesus with 1950s children. Salman's Jesus is controversial for its blue eyes and European features. Leroy Carlson agrees that it's probably historically inaccurate, but calls it artist's prerogative. Paul Beatty understands, but he says that's also exactly what draws him to it as Americana. Growing up, that's how Christ looked. And it's because of Solomon's head of Christ. And that's intriguing to me that one guy's interpretation of Christ has affected millions of people.